ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah bismillah in these next minutes we will like to discuss a topic that is of extreme importance and that everyone living here in the west should have a concern for but before that i want to say Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of those who have come out to attend to all those who have tuned in from afar to listen we welcome all of you to today's lecture series dealing with the timely topic investing in our future now the premise of this topic it was to discuss those affairs and those things that are connected to the establishment of muslim communities here in the west and this is why i say everyone living in the west then they should have an extreme concern for the likes of these topics because we are one in need in vital need of a masjid and that community that is erected around the masjid and two because we live in the west we here so bismillahi ta'ala we will benefit from a firmly established functional muslim community and when looking at this topic we have to uh, yani address it from a number of ways we have to come at this topic from a number of different ways and from the ways in coming at this topic or from the topics that are needed in discussing this issue then of course it will be uh the establishment of our communities upon iman which necessitates that they are established upon knowledge which necessitates righteous good deeds necessitates us having a proper understanding and perspective as relates to our um journey going towards the hereafter going towards our graves and doing those things that will help benefit us when we are in the grave and likewise looking at the practical aspects of those things that will be needed to establish the likes of these affairs from the now to establish the likes of these affairs from 
those economic things that are needed. I can just you can just put the volume down. Huh? Or just, just help us leave out of it. <laughs> nah. Not bad. The um those those practical things from the economic means that will be needed to help facilitate the likes of these things uh, and the like. But bidnilahi ta'ala, the portion that I wanted to look at and to deal with, um, and thus which was the topic of my talk, and that is a community not founded upon knowledge and good deeds is doomed to fail. A community that is not established upon knowledge and good deeds is doomed to fail. Now, because these are ex these are essential components that are needed for success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as we go through this, inshallah ta'ala, I would like those who are listening, those who are in attendance to bidnilahi ta'ala, take notes. Now, either by a pen and paper, old school or new school, and your, the memo, you know, your memo app, now on your phone, tablet, computer, whatever, whatever is easy and convenient for you. But also, I want you to come with me on a journey of reflection. Okay? So I want us to reflect and to ponder over this concept and then connect dots. Because a lot of times it seems we have a disconnection when it comes to our practical lives, we'll understand concepts in the deen and we'll acknowledge them and, and say, yes, that's true. But then there's a disconnection when it comes to implementing those concepts in our lives. Now, so inshallah ta'ala, this is, you know, like a journey of reflection. But I also, I want you to take down the, uh, the texts that are mentioned, inshallah ta'ala, so that you can further contemplate upon them, bidnilahi ta'ala. And I want you to keep the premise, you know, the title of the talk in mind that a community that is not established upon knowledge and righteous good deeds, then it is doomed to fail. Naam? But Allah Ta'ala in the Qur'an, He tells us, وَالْعَصْرِ Naam? Allah Ta'ala, He swears by time, by, by the time, al-asr. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ That verily mankind is in a state of loss. Naam? That mankind is in a state of loss. Meaning that what? Failures. In other words, to put that another way, they have failed. They're in a state of loss, a state of ruin. Now, but so now I want you to reflect on this in light of establishing a community. Mankind is lost. Mankind, they are lost in a state of loss, a state of ruin, failures. They have failed. Illa, except, except for who? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us the equation for success. Allah ta'ala, He says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who believe. Except for those who believe. Now, and this is important because hence, this was the motivation for what? For the title. Just to articulate this concept as relates to establishing communities using other words, right? Except for those who believe. Now, belief is based upon what? It's based upon ilm. How can you believe in something that you are ignorant about? Now, you have to have knowledge of it in order to properly believe in it. Al-ilm, knowledge, qabl, qawli wal amal. Knowledge precedes statements and actions. Now, Knowledge precedes statements and actions. Right. So this is why the title says that a community not established upon knowledge and righteous good deeds. What do we understand from knowledge is what? Is belief. That we have to believe correctly. In order to believe correctly, that we have to have knowledge. We have to have any. Now, so there you have the component of what? Of knowledge. Because we have to have belief and belief you have to know in order to believe properly. Right? So now we understand the knowledge portion of the title. And then, and good deeds. Allah Ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except for those who believe, and we said that belief is based upon what? Knowledge. 
Now, okay, and righteous good deeds, acting in accordance to that knowledge. Righteous good deeds. So hence, where? And the establishment or, or, or and righteous good deeds. Now, any community not established upon knowledge, and, and what, Iman? And Iman is, is established upon knowledge, right? But righteous good deeds, hence righteous good deeds, then it's doomed to fail. Of course, because Allah Ta'ala gives us the exception. The exception to those who are lost. The exception to the losers are those who have these identifying characteristics. That they have that they have uh, Iman. They have belief, proper belief, which is founded upon knowledge. That they work righteous good deeds. They call to the truth. They give da'wah. And they call to patience. Now, this portion of the concept was left to be understood and hence pointed out in the talk's introduction. Why? Because to put all of that in the title of the, um, of the talk, it, it'd be long, right? It'd, be, it'd just be long. So it's understood what? We have to give da'wah. We have to call others and invite others to what is correct. And we have to encourage with patience because on every step of the journey, it requires patience. Patience in what? Seeking knowledge. And then what? Patience in implementing the knowledge. And then what? Patience in being consistent upon the implementation of the knowledge. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tawfiq because there is no success. There is no tawfiq without Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. MashaAllah can. Whatever Allah wills is, whatever He does not will, then it is not. Naam? So we need the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tawfiq of irshad, that we are guided to what is correct. We need the tawfiq of implementing that which is correct. And we need the tawfiq of remaining consistent upon that which is correct. In other words, tawfiq, it means what? The success from Allah Ta'ala. If we want success, then we need success. And we ask Allah for success in guiding us to what is right so that we know what is right. We have any about what is right. And then he gives us success in implementing that which is correct. And then he gives us success in remaining steadfast upon implementing that which is correct. Now, this is vital if you want to be successful. So except for those who believe. And those who do righteous good deeds. When we do the righteous good deeds, we have to be patient. We have to have patience in acquiring knowledge. We have to be patient in implementing the knowledge. And we have to be patient in calling to the knowledge and inviting others to the knowledge. Because during the course of these things, we're going to experience some degree of difficulty. Now, when calling people to Islam, you're going to receive some type of harm, some type of annoyance. Of people what speaking bad about you people attacking your character people actually may try to physically assault you now people may actually try to kill you as there were prophets who were killed in any event it requires patience okay so now going back to the concept if we try to establish communities that are devoid of knowledge, devoid of righteous good deeds, how can they be successful? It's not possible. Allah Ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Verily, human beings, they are in a state of loss, except for those who are adorned with, and then the characteristics that are mentioned from them is knowledge. Acting according to knowledge, calling to knowledge, and being patient at every step and stage of the way. Let's look at it from another standpoint. If we seek to establish a community for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, And seek your provisions. Seek your provisions. Seek the means that are necessary for the attainment. Now, seek the means that are necessary for attainment. Of course, in particular, and in specific about the Hajj, to seek those means and those things that you need so that you may go to the Hajj. Nah? But this is what? General in everything. 
We have to seek those, the means. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, That be diligent in seeking after that which will benefit you. Be diligent in seeking after that which will benefit you. Now, so we have to seek the means. We have to seek those things that are needed in order to benefit, in order to attain that thing that we are trying to accomplish. And then Allah Ta'ala, he says, and verily the best provision is taqwa the best provision so when you have a list like like a to-do list right those things that you need you want to do a particular thing then you make a to-do list i need to get this i need to do that i need to you know purchase these materials i need to whatever the case is whatever the project is you have a to-do list you have you know checks things that you have to do in order to uh, complete that project now but on to the do list for anything that you want to do ever in this life has to be taqwa it has to be doing that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded you to do and staying away from that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded you to stay away from that makes sense so if we want to establish a community we have to what we have to have taqwa it has to be established upon taqwa but the ulama they mention so we see the connection the ulama they mention they say wa asas taqwa and the foundation of taqwa is knowledge. The foundation of taqwa, it is what? It is knowledge. Now, because how are you going to do that which Allah loves and that which Allah has commanded you to do if you don't know what it is? How are you going to do it if you don't know how you have been commanded to do it? How you have been taught to do it inside of the book and the sunnah upon the understanding of the self of this ummah. If you don't have that in, how are you going to do it correctly? Now, Allah Ta'ala, he says, salat and establish the prayer. But how are you going to pray unless you have in, unless you have knowledge on how to pray? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Sallu kama salli. Pray as you see me praying. So that means that what? Then we have to learn from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exactly how it is we pray if we want to what? To pray. So it requires knowledge. It requires knowledge. Now, wa knowledge in the mar'il bita'allum. Verily, knowledge is acquired through the seeking of knowledge. Now, we have to seek it. We have to try, put forth effort to seek the knowledge. Ala kulli hal. We need taqwa. So we want to do anything, we have to establish it upon taqwa. And taqwa is established upon what? Knowledge. So we need knowledge. So without taqwa, can our community be successful? No, it's going to fail. And taqwa, what's the foundation of taqwa? What's the foundation of yani, uh, uh, having fear of Allah Ta'ala, reverence of Allah Ta'ala, doing that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded us to do, and staying away from that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded us to stay away from? How do we do that? What's the foundation? The foundation is knowledge. So if we don't have knowledge, if the community is devoid of knowledge, had no concern of knowledge, then that community ultimately is doomed to fail. It, it can't be successful because it doesn't have the required ingredients for success. So it's not possible for it to be successful, right? That's like a person saying, I'm going to make bread Right? And we're talking bread based on dough. I don't know if some chef come tell me, oh, you can make bread without dough. I ain't talking about that type of bread. I'm talking about bread, bread, or the traditional bread. It's like a person's coming and saying that I'm, I, I want to make bread, but I'm not going to use water, flour, yeast, nothing. No baking soda, no nothing. But I want bread. You're going to tell them how? You don't have the ingredients for bread. So you, you, you can't make bread. You don't, have the, you don't have its ingredients. So if we want to build a successful community, we need the proper ingredients. The proper ingredients is what? We need taqwa. We need to have fear of Allah Ta'ala. We need to do what Allah Ta'ala commanded us to do. Stay away from that which Allah Ta'ala commanded us to stay away from. That cannot be accomplished without knowledge. Now, so any community devoid of the key ingredients of success is not going to prosper. It's going to fail. It's going to fail. Even though it may have a big, beautiful structure decked out, comfortable, plush carpets, sitting on a beautiful piece of land, and it could sparkle even when the sun hits it. If that community was not based upon knowledge, it is doomed to fail because we have been commanded to what established the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We have not been commanded to build beautiful and decked out and lavish structures. Meaning that what? What we are required to do can be accomplished with or without an elaborate, beautiful, decked out, sparkles when the sun hits it structure. So that within itself is not the goal. The goal is to establish that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded us to establish. That cannot be done without knowledge, without taqwa, without righteous good deeds, without calling to good, without calling to patience, so on and so forth. If we don't have the ingredients of it and we just have a shell of a structure and we can make our concern on brick and mortar, then it's like a body without a soul. And a body without a soul, what good is it? What good is a body without a soul? It's of no good. We got to get rid of it. It's going to start rotting. It's going to start, start to stink. It's going to get, you understand? We have to bury it. So if we want to establish a community, then we need to establish a community that is vibrant, a community that is alive, a community that is structure and what? And the, for lack of a better term, the soul of the community. And that is what? Establishing the Tawheed, being upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As understood by the Salaf of this Ummah, all of that requires knowledge and righteous good deeds that we, that we learn and then we implement that in which we have been commanded to do. If a community is not established upon it, then it is destroyed. And Muawiyah, رضي الله تعالى عنه, narrated on the authority of Muawiyah, رضي الله تعالى عنه. And it's a famous hadith, a hadith that I'm pretty sure all of us either have memorized it or have heard it before. Now, the vast majority, maybe some, this is the first time that they're hearing it, alhamdulillah. Now, for all of us, there was, a, there was a time where we had our first time hearing it, so that's not a problem. No, it's, it's, it's no worries. Hadith al-Mutafiqun alayhi is agreed upon by al-Bukhari and Muslim. It's a hadith that is authentic. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ That whatever Allah wants good for, He gives them understanding of the religion. The ulama, they mention that when you look at this, when you examine the words of this hadith, you also by default understand its opposite. In other words, what is implied by the opposite. Because the hadith it says, May yuridillahu bihi khayran. Whoever Allah wants for them, good. Whoever Allah wants for them, good. Then what? Yufaqihu fiddin. He will give them understanding of the religion. So what is understood by the fault is that what? Those whom Allah does not want good for them, he does not give them understanding of the religion. And Imam Sa'di, he mentions, he says, why? He says, this is because al-jazam in jins al amal Because the crime, uh, the punishment will be appropriate for the crime. The punishment will be appropriate for the crime. This individual is an individual who he didn't want good for himself. An individual who didn't strive to learn, who didn't try to learn, who didn't invest his time in his own benefit in learning. You know how you have you know, like the self-help coaches and you know business coaches and things of this nature. And what do they always tell you? The best investment is to invest in yourself. Don't they always tell you that? Huh? The best investment is to invest in yourself. And what do they mean by invest in yourself? Do they mean take some money from your paycheck, put it in your pocket, and leave it right there? No. They mean what? That you learn. If you're in any particular industry, you learn. Right? You gain knowledge about your particular trade and so on and so forth. This is an investment in yourself. This is something that whether you're at this company or that company, they can't take that, that knowledge from you. Correct? That's the investment in yourself. Okay. The ultimate investment in yourself is learning about your religion. That's the ultimate investment in yourself because that investment goes beyond the grave. That benefits you in this world and in the next. That benefits you when you're on top of the earth and when you're buried beneath the earth. That benefits you when you're raised up on the day of judgment and we meet your Lord. Knowledge of the religion. That's the ultimate investment inside oneself. Now, that's the ultimate investment inside yourself. So, if an individual didn't want to invest in himself, if an individual didn't want any good for himself, if an individual turned away from learning, thus... Allah Ta'ala, he turns that individual away from understanding the religion and learning. Why? Because the individual turned himself away. So because they didn't want any good for themselves, Allah doesn't want any good for them. So therefore they have no understanding of the religion. Point blank. Having understanding of religion is what? 
based upon having knowledge of the religion. Okay? Because you cannot have understanding without knowledge. This is Allah's deen. I don't care how long you've been on top of the earth. I don't care how long you've been a Muslim. I don't care how long you've been fasting. How many Ramadans you fasted? I don't care. Knowledge is attained, is acquired through seeking it. You understand? Just living does not equate to the acquisition of knowledge just because you lived. No. This is why yani the Quran, it raises people. The Quran, it raises certain people, other people, it puts them down. This is why you can have a young man. If that young man has ilm, he, he's, 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 he's above us. Now, there's no yani, age limit, right? If you read the biographies of, of the great Imams, Imam in Noe, uh, for example, uh, half of the Hakimi, for example, they were from the early man, they were very young. So, so age is not necessarily a requirement. What's the requirement is the attainment of knowledge. If that knowledge is attained, then that, that level is attained, whether they live for a long time or not. Now, I mean, I mean no, uh, he died when he was very young, but he was an alim before he died. And half of the Hakimi, he died, he was very young, but he was an alim before he died. He was, he was a scholar before he died because it was by knowledge. So knowledge is what is needed. So we have to learn, we have to study. If we turn our backs from learning and turn our backs from studying, then how can we be successful? So any community that turns their backs on learning, how can they be successful? They're doomed to fail. Allah Ta'ala, for the individual who does not have understanding of religion, just because Allah Ta'ala didn't want any good for them. If you have a community, right? And it could be said about that community, they have no concern of their religion, they have no understanding of their religion. Then this is an indication, is a sign that what Allah does not want good for them. So any anything that has on it that description that Allah does not want good for you, how is it possible ever that you will be successful? You will not. You will be doomed to fail. Earth man, on, on authority of, of Earth man, from the Allah Ta'ala Anhu, famous hadith collected uh, in Al Bukhari. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنِ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you is those who learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an. Naam? So teaching, giving da'wah, giving back, this is, this is necessary. This is sadaqah. This is necessary. Not just you learn it and that's it. No, but that you convey it to others. قُوَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِكُمْ نَعْرَى Save yourselves and your families from the fire. So we have to give back. So anybody who turns away from doing that which is best for them, how can they, how, how can they possibly benefit? How can they possibly benefit? Now, knowledge is sought, first and foremost, traditionally, where? Inside of the masajid. Inside of the masajid. This is where learning takes place. And this has to be from the functionalities of our masajid. Not just that they're just decked out, plush, you know, $30,000 chandelier and, you know, Subhanallah, and that's it. No, that's, as we said, that's like, a, that's like a body with no soul. What is really important is that what is that the masjid is conducive for learning. Nah? That the masjid is conducive for learning, for everyone, for the children, for the women, for the men, the young, the old, those in school, those who graduated, those working, those retired, everybody. That the masjid is a place where Learning is taking place. People are learning. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, as it comes in the Hadith of Turmadi, "Ida marartum biriyad al jannah farutau." That when you come across the gardens of Jannah, then then join them. Now, then sit and join them. But. So the Sahaba they say, what are the gardens of Jannah? What, 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 are, what are these gardens of Jannah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, The circles of remembrance. What is meant by the circles of remembrance? It means the circles of knowledge. You're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are studying his book. You are studying the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Quran, 
Kalam Allah, Ghayl Makhluq. It is the speech of Allah, it's not created. So when you're studying the words of Allah Ta'ala, then you're of course what? Remembering your Lord. You're studying His words, you're studying what they mean. Now, this is what is intended by the circles of remembrance, meaning the circles of knowledge. You're learning about the rules and the regulations of your religion. Who receives the zakat? How the zakat is, the, is, is calculated from your monies. Now, so on and so forth. This is needed. You have to learn. And this what? It benefits the society. The benefits for ourselves should be obvious, right? We learn, we, we, we contemplate over the words of Allah. We learn the meaning of the words of Allah via the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we study the tafsir because the, because the sunnah explains the Quran. The Quran explains the Quran. The Sahaba, they explain to us the meanings of the Quran. So on and so forth. So that we learn what are the meanings of the ayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because that will have a direct impact upon our lives. That will have a direct impact upon our lives, upon our hearts. It will cleanse our hearts. It will cleanse our hearts from the from 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 those filthy and lowly desires and so on and so forth. It it cleans us, ma'am. And we need that. We need to be cleansed. We need to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with a heart that is salim. Those are the only ones who are going to be safe on the day of judgment. And we ask Allah Taala to make us of those who meet Him with a clean heart. How are you going to clean your heart by the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And from what it is into that remembrance of Allah Ta'ala, that it is what studying the Quran, studying the Sunnah of his, of his Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because both the Quran and the Sunnah that they are revelation, studying that which Allah Ta'ala had revealed. This is how we benefit. Now, ala kulli had any circle of knowledge we come across it, we have to we have to join it. Why? Because that's going to help us benefit. That's going to help us benefit. And that becomes clear in another in a, in a narration of Abi uh, An Abi Huraira radiAllahu taala anhu fi ma rawahu Muslim fi Sahih in that which Imam Muslim he brings inside of his uh, collection of authentic hadith with a Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said لا يقعد قوم يذكرون الله عز وجل إلا حفظتهم الملائكة he said never does a people sit Remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Remembering Allah by what? By studying. By studying the book of Allah. By reading the book of Allah. Contemplating over the book of Allah. Going over the tafsir of the book of Allah. Studying the ilm, knowledge of the religion. Going over the sunnah. Studying about the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he may implement it. Never does a people sit down collectively to do this except that what? Except that before uh, the, the angels encircle them. The angels encircle them. Now, and they are enveloped with mercy. They are enveloped with mercy. Now, so already right now, how does it benefit us personally? The angels encircle us. Right? We are enveloped in mercy. And the tranquility descends upon them. You understand? The world can be stressful. You know, your job's stressful, you know, things stressful, right? But when you sit and you're studying and you're, and you're seeking knowledge, you're sitting in the circles of knowledge, you get a break from that. Rahmah, mercy descends upon you. Tranquility descends upon you. Those things that were troubling you, you forget about them. Now, because your focus is in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you benefit first and foremost. And, 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 and this last thing that Mr. Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, if this was the only benefit of coming to the circles of knowledge, that would be sufficient. If this was the only benefit of coming to the circles of knowledge, that would be enough. And that is, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah mentions them. Do, do you understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we, our, our um, you know, perception is, is off. Like the way we look at things is totally twisted. Right? Some people, if a famous person mentions them in a tweet, they get happy. Right? They'll come and they'll show you. Look, celebrity so-and-so, you know, mentioned me in a tweet. Celebrity so-and-so tagged me in a post. They mentioned me. They feel important. And this celebrity so-and-so is a nobody son of nobody. <laughs> right? Allah was to But what is better? 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned you to the angels. You understand that? That Allah ta'ala, he mentions you to the angels. This is a benefit that if there was no other benefit in seeking knowledge and being in the circles of knowledge is enough. It's enough. And then there's so many more things that, you know, are prepared. Um, but bismillahi ta'ala, we'll save that perhaps to another time. But let's really draw this point home is that if we have communities that are devoid of being encircled by the angels, devoid of having the mercy upon them and tranquility descend upon them, devoid of being mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they are not establishing the circles of knowledge and they are not coming to those circles of knowledge that are established how could they ever benefit? They are going to fail. They are going to be losers. So we want to establish strong communities. It has to be established upon knowledge, the proper belief, righteous good deeds, giving dawah. Now I'm giving dawah, brother. This is very important. And just real briefly, just please bear with me. It's very important. It is a shame on us that we have communities or we have massage in communities and the people in that community don't know nothing about Islam. They don't know about the Muslims because what? There's no interaction. We get out of our cars, we go into the masjid, we close the door, then that's it. We come out the masjid, we go to our cars, we drive away. So now you have people living adjacent to the masjid all their lives, seeing the Muslims come and go, and never heard about Islam? That shame on us or shame on them? Shame on us. How the neighbors never heard about Islam? We never gave down to them about Islam. You know how ashamed and, and terrified you're gonna be on a day of judgment? If, 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 if your disbelieving neighbor comes and says, I had a Muslim who was my neighbor, they never told me nothing about Islam. Right? So now what about those living adjacent to the masjid? Never heard nothing about Islam? SubhanAllah. That was a must. That was a must. To who? To the people. Regardless of who they are. White, black, Latin, Asian. Who cares? Because the dawah is what? It's for everybody. Poor. Rich, middle class, everybody. Those who have homes, those who are homeless, everybody. We gotta remember that. And we have to be patient. If you want to be successful and have successful and vibrant communities, then this is what we have to be upon. We'll break at this point uh, so we can have some, some, some break and enjoy some uh, refreshments before the next sitting. We have the Qadr. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا